Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today Fedora 29 has been released, and so we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at this. Of course, a little over a month ago, I released the video on Fedora 29 beta, and uh, this is the Fedora release that introduces modularity across the whole desktop um, that used to just be in servers. It also comes with GNOME 3.30 and the functions and features with that. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at the desktop. We're going to see if it's actually better on memory, which is one of the things that claims to do. And then we'll talk about some reasons you might want to use Fedora. All right, so having a look at their release notes, uh, which is uh, uh, in fedoramagazine.org slash announcing Fedora 29. Uh, and uh, basically, they're just walking through the various improvements and changes, mostly focusing on the modularity, as that is a, a huge increase. So basically, you can use different uh, different versions of, of same applications. You can choose which ones you want. The example here is you can choose Node.js version 8 or version 10 on this particular new system. Uh, of course, GNOME 3.30 is supposed to come with a lot of improvements in, in how the system performs. And so I didn't specifically notice that when we ran the beta. So we're going to have a look at that again. And then there's some other some other adjustments and changes that they have. So you can head on over to getfedora.org where you can download a copy of the desktop uh, that you can uh, install on your virtual box or your real computer, whichever it happens to be. Of course, if you're new to Linux and you want to test this out, I'd recommend using it as either a virtual box or on a live key to try it out. If it agrees with you, go ahead and install it from there. And as always, if you are uh, if you are actually a regular user of the particular distro, make sure that you uh, find out how you can support them. Let's see if I can find the support links down here real quick. Uh, I forgot to look for them. Not seeing it, there should be support links down here somewhere. So uh, have a look at that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, jump on into the distro and have a look at have a look at what we what we see here. Okay, so here we are on the login screen. One of the things that I've noticed is it takes a long time to boot up and shut down this distro. Uh, it is, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it is taking a while. Of course, on your basic login screen, we have all of our accessibilities that you have up here in the upper right corner, as well as your, your power button, your audio, and your connections. You can click on our user, or if we're not listed, you can uh, click on the not listed button there and enter a password. Of course, with the gear next to the sign in button, you can choose between GNOME, which is Wayland, uh, GNOME Classic, which is an older shell, and GNOME on XORG. Uh, in some instances, like if you want to run OBS or something like that, you might need to go back to XORG for now. Uh, some people say it works, some people say it doesn't. I'm not sure what the, what the difference is. I know every time I've tried to use something like OBS on uh, on Wayland, it just doesn't work yet. Uh, so uh, that being said, we're going to go ahead and go with the the Wayland experience because that is their default. Uh, once again, we are greeted with this really awesome wallpaper. I kind of like that. So that was one of my best things to say about it before. Now, before we jump into anything else, let's go ahead and pull up the system resources and see what the system looks like. So again, remember that with GNOME 3, they're supposed to make this a whole lot more user-friendly, a lot lower RAM. You can see out of the box, this thing is still using 1.1 gig of RAM and quite a bit of CPU processing power, actually. Now, uh, some people, every time I bring this up, some people will send screenshots, whatever else. I go, look, I have mine a lot, lot lower resources. Well, that's good, and that's very nice, and I'm glad. But if you want to advertise out of the box, having a better, you know, better use of system resources, maybe have it use less than a gig of RAM. That's a criticism, um, because they're saying that GNOME 3.30 does take less memory. It does say it's more compact, but I'm not actually experiencing that. 
Now I do notice that the system is snappier than it than it has been. So it is debatable whether the amount of system RAM really is indicative to how efficient the system runs. It's just that, yeah, I've seen I've seen things like uh, the latest Ubuntu running GNOME still. I mean, it's uh, is that. 3.30, I think, the latest 1810, and that runs on 600 megabytes. So, you know, clearly there is something that you can do. Uh, of course, we have our uh, our basic screen here. We have our various desktops over here on the right. We have our favorites panel on the left, and then you can show all of your applications. So out of the box, uh, this guy has the applications that you're used to. I really haven't seen these changed in a while. Now I'm going to focus on something different here that I don't usually focus on, and this is a huge positive for the system. If you come into, uh, into your settings and go to your online accounts, you can enter your various online accounts here. Now I have tested this out with Nextcloud. I'm pretty sure it also works with Google and Microsoft accounts. But the way Fedora is built is out of the box, even better than Ubuntu and most other distros that are using the GNOME shell. Out of the box, this is going to integrate a whole lot better if you happen to use online accounts. The reason is GNOME is the only one of these that I have seen, and I'm not that I'm hunting for them, that has a variety of applications pre-installed. Calendar, Contacts, and Evolution. All of these will integrate with, uh, with the online accounts portion, and if you're using Google or Microsoft or Nextcloud or own cloud, I guess, then out of the box without doing any other configuration, you go right into that online account, enter your data, and when you pull up contacts, it's automatically going to sync all of your contacts from your Nextcloud account. If you pull up the same with GNOME Calendar, it is going to do the same. It will sync your calendar automatically. Of course, Evolution, because out of the box it has a calendar and it has a contact link and does your emails, it is going to integrate all of that that you already have set up through your Nextcloud account. This is the only one of these distros out of the box that supports all of that, and that means that they're moving in a positive direction in wanting to integrate with how a lot of people are using their computers. Now, you may be in my camp where I don't actually do a lot of those types of things. I tend not to work on cloud devices, and in that case, you don't really care. But for those of you that do care, GNOME is a desktop that you can enter in your Nextcloud Microsoft or Google accounts and have your contacts, your calendar, your emails, and your files and things like that all synced up. That is a big deal if you are into those types of devices, and that is a huge positive for the system. Um, of course, in the settings, uh, not a lot has changed here. In fact, I don't think anything has changed since my beta video, so we're not going to walk through all of it. Of course, we looked at the backgrounds, notifications, uh, you can control the uh, individual application notifications, so that is totally awesome, unlike uh, Deepin, where you had no real control. You can determine what does the search function interact with. You can turn on or turn off. You can see characters and weather is turned off by default. A lot of other things are turned on, so that is kind of all up to your preference. As far as your privacy, um, when you first load up the distribution, location services, uh, you're, you're greeted with a screen to determine your location services and your problem reporting, where the default is turned on, but it presents you with the screen so you can toggle them off before you skip to the next section. So again, uh, for those people that want to use things like location services, it does have that integrated, and I'm sure it works well. I don't actually use those functions, so I don't know. But I turn those off. It's great that it gives you the option to disable those. They are turned on by default, so if you wipe through the screens really fast without reading anything, you will start your system with location services turned on. But it does give you the option to, uh, to disable that. Uh, there is our sharing, and then, uh, of course, the, the details here. Here's your date and your time. We can do automatic time zone settings. Uh, our time zone, we set that. You can change your um, time formatting down there. And then, of course, uh, we have our uh, default applications, which since I haven't uh, installed anything extra, now you'll see the calendar defaults to evolution, although we do have, the, uh, we do have another option there put in there uh, for 
Let's see, everything else, it's pretty much uh, what it is, except music, you can go with videos or rhythm box out of the box. All right, so that is inside of your settings panel. Um, also, let's look at the software store. Uh, so in this system here, of course, you can go up to your menu and get into your software repositories where you can determine what else. So if you'd like to install the third party. So you don't want to install third party if you want to install something like uh, Google Chrome. Let's go ahead and en en enable that. Let's just go ahead and have a look at that. Do your software repositories. Oh, okay, that's why. That's why. You got to come down here and enable this to do your Google Chrome. If you have NVIDIA drivers, you want to do that. There's non-free Steam. Um, and then there's other, there's uh, test updates, uh, there's uh, modularity, which is enabled, you'll see. Uh, Gnome Shell Extensions Repository is enabled. All right, so uh, there's what we, uh, what we can see here. So uh, as far as the software enabled, you're going to find pretty much any of the software that you need. Uh, it's not going to be anything different from most of the other distros that you have. I am still buggered about this uh, this one thing in, in the um, they made a big deal in the uh, in the release notes for GNOME 3.30 about this new podcast app which still doesn't show up. Apparently the best I can tell you have to install it as a flat pack. Um, that's the best I can tell. So I'm not going to install it. I'd rather just use something that's on the system so G Potter works well for me. Uh, you can see that the system is uh, it is running fairly snappy. It's not it's not super slow. It's not it's not exactly zooming as fast as other things are. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at our add-ons. So what we should see in here is the ability to enable uh, our. Where is it? Then we turn on light or dark themes. I want to um, I wanted to look at your um, extensions for GNOME. Let's just go ahead and install the um, tweak tool here. One of the things here is that uh, it is installing new software. It's not prompting for the password. Uh, so that maybe could be a good thing. Maybe it could be a bad thing. It's uh, kind of maybe up to up to what you might be thinking. Uh, but I would prefer that it does prompt me for the password. All right. So here's our appearances. Um, so images, zoom. All right, so here is our extensions. So we got applications menu. There's window list, so we can enable that if you want the window list to the bottom of your screen. I always like using those. There's your top bar, battery percentage, which I don't need. There's our date, that's always useful for me. Okay, so maximize and minimize buttons. We're going to turn those on. That's one of the criticisms that uh, that I always generally have for elementary. It doesn't have the it doesn't have a good extension pack or a, a tweak tool that you can easily install out of the repository to turn things like that on. It's like they just don't really want you to. Uh, so at least with this, I I do have the ability to to do that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, look for GNOME extensions now. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install the application. See, I, I wish that they, they uh, most of the distros I've run with, with GNOME actually will, um, uh, we'll have this installed by default, which is kind of handy. All right, let's do um, desktop. One of the down one of the downsides is the newer versions of GNOME will not allow us to install our desktop icons. So now I'd like to do this. Let's go ahead and install that. 
cancel that. I shouldn't have to do that. There we are. Now we have our desktop icons. So now I should be able to work off my desktop so I can do a new folder. Um, so that's, that's handy. <laughs> All right. I was hoping that that would actually decrease the size of my desktops, desktop icons as well. Let's see if I can do over here. No, nope, we're not going to worry with that. All right. Dash to dock is another popular one. So this guy here is going to install that. That's going to give us our dock always on our main window there. And of course we can set where do we want it, top, bottom, right. We can show it on all monitors or not, and then we can uh, limit the size. I like the smaller icons, so we're going to go ahead and turn that down a little bit. I don't like them that small. I think that's good there. Okay, here's your launchers, behavior, and appearance. So that's sufficient enough for me. So you can hunt around and look for different extensions, the things that might make make the system a better uh, a better use case for you. Go ahead and close tabs there. Okay, there's that. All right, so there we are. That's a little bit more usable to me. Uh, now, of course, if I were going to be running this, then what I might want to do is uh, I'd want to look around for some different extensions just to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, but that's how we can uh, work with uh, work with Fedora and GNOME to make it a little bit more user friendly. Uh, if you like your desktop icons, I really do. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I really I won't work on a computer without desktop icons. That's that's just for me. Uh, of course, if you want to, uh, you can drag and drop things over onto your uh, your dock over there. So if you want to put your uh, LibreOffice over there, maybe you're using Maps on a regular basis, you can do that. Uh, so anything that you might want to use, you can go ahead and do that. Of course, who doesn't like, oh, email's already over there. <laughs> I was going to say, let's go ahead and put emails over there, but uh, it already is over there. There we are. So now we have a system set up a little bit more friendly. So we have our, um, uh, we have our... Uh, panel across the bottom so I can see what applications I've open and then uh, of course uh, if you want uh, multiple instances of Firefox you just have to middle click it if you have a middle click button or you can right click it and you can open a new window um, I've never cared for the I don't like it when people say just go middle click it that's why I like panels and it's just personal preferences though very personal preferences all right, so there is our Fedora 29. Uh, I'm noticing no crashes. It is still very, very snappy. I'm not noticing any major issues with it. So who knows? Maybe I'll give this a try again. Uh, I classically haven't had a good experiences with running Fedora, but I'm definitely, uh, definitely open to uh, experimenting with it again. So there's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, let me know what you think of, uh, of the new Fedora. And with that being said, thanks for coming along on this uh, quick look preview here. And uh, don't forget to also take a look at my uh, beta release video of the same distribution to see what some of the other um, positives and negatives are that I said over there. You can help support the channel by checking a look at the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That is T-O-M-M. -M. And check out the support page, switchlinux.com forward slash support. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.